What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Mike Dolce Show. This is the Ask the Dietitian edition. We have Professor Lindsay Howard, MSRD, LRD, DDCCSCS, about to join us. She is stuck in some Mother's Day traffic. And hey, that's okay. I'm happy to be sitting here with you. Now, many of you are here to see us discuss George St. Pierre's new diet. And he actually revealed his new diet plan. We're going to speak about that at length. If Lindsay's not here the next minute or two, I'm going to jump in and start sharing my thoughts. Uh, nice to see everybody here. Feel free to answer, ask any questions in the comments after we get through the first few um, topics of this episode. We will then go through and answer your questions. Now, if you're just joining us for the first time, thank you. We appreciate you being here. Mike Dolce, four-time world MMA trainer of the year, number one best-selling author, multiple times, also most proudly, two-time girl dad. Probably my, my most challenging achievement in all of my life is being a two-time girl dad, six years old and four years old. So those parents out there, you understand. Let me take a sip. I see those questions coming through. Awesome. Appreciate that. Now, as we're waiting for Professor Howard, I do want to jump in and share my screen here and discuss George St. Pierre's new diet plan. We all know you can see the legend right there, Mr. George St. Pierre, GSP, a.k.a. Rush the greatest welterweight champion in UFC history and personally on my Mount Rushmore of the goats in MMA. If you watched the last episode of this Ask the Dietitian edition of the Mike Dolce Show, then you know I have George St. Pierre, John Jones, Fedor Emelianenko as the top three goats. Number four, we can start making some debates about. And I have George, John, and Fedor because of their dominance, because the quality of opposition they fought during their reign. And of course, George is very high on that list. George, in my opinion, is the epitome of what most mixed martial artists should aspire to emulate when they think about their own career. I have nothing but huge respect for George St. Pierre. And you can see in the photo behind me is a very respectful samurai bow when I was working with Johnny Hendricks, who was challenging GSP for George's welterweight world title. Johnny lost a split decision to George in that fight. And to be fair, 11 of 12 ringside journalists all scored the bout for Johnny. George, I believe, if nothing else, knows how well prepared Johnny was for that fight. And to be fair, to tip my own hat here for a minute, I understand exactly what I had to do to help Johnny get on weight and be in shape for this fight to go 25 minutes with the greatest welterweight of all time, George St. Pierre. So that being said, now I do want to jump in and discuss what George's new diet plan is. As you can see here, I'm going to hit play, although volume wise, you may or may not be able to hear it too well based upon your connection. Let me briefly hit play here and then I will paraphrase what George has said. Well, actually, he's not saying anything right now because this might be, let me hit a quick refresh for you guys here as we get this up. Diet guided by Dr. Paul Saladino. I feel very strong, even though I lost five pounds. So he's saying he just started his new diet, his new animal-based diet under the guise of the carnivore MD, Dr. Paul Saladino. hardest part for me was to stop drinking coffee. The hardest part for him was to stop drinking coffee. Eating chocolate. Stop eating chocolate. Uh, 
pastry and all that stuff. That Carbs, pastry, and all that stuff. So as we go on now, let me just chat at you for a minute here. So as we go on and as we hear what George is saying, George St. Pierre just started following an animal-based diet. My inbox got blown up about this. Blown up about this. Probably the highest notes that I've gotten, messages, and thank you guys all for messaging me on my own Instagram page, The Dolce Diet. And I, I was like, oh God, let me go look and see what's happening here. I went and I listened. I'm like, okay, now here's the problem. Now I'm going to talk about two things. Number one, I am going to do an analysis of George's diet and what that means to you. And number two, I want to speak about with you right now is the conflation of science for marketing purposes. What does that mean? Many people see that George St. Pierre is doing a one month trial of the carnivore MD. And let me briefly show you who that is right here. The carnivore MD is Dr. Paul Saladino. Now, Dr. Paul Saladino, as we can see here, very fit, very good looking guy with his, you know, big old plate of meat, meat, meat on top of meat, on top of meat, on top of meat. And he wrote a, a what's the, the, the book? Um, let me show you here. He wrote the book, The Carnivore Code, right? The Carnivore Code. He runs a supplement company called, called Heart and Soul, where he sells carnivore based products. And hey, that's all fine and dandy. But again, I wanted to show you something so you understand. Everyone here, please pay attention. Now, George St. Pierre is saying, hey, he's following Paul Saladano's, Dr. Paul Saladano, to be fair, following his nutrition protocols while following an animal-based diet. And George is clear to say it is an animal-based diet. Now, most people are conflating this to be both a ketogenic diet, which is not, and a carnivore-based diet, which it is not. And this is what bothers the hell out of me. Bothers the hell out of me. They're calling it an animal-based diet when it's not. We already have a term for this. And what is the term? It is an omnivorous meal plan. Omnivoric, as I like to say. It is an omnivorous meal plan. What does that mean? That means, and right here on George's own page, watch me, actually, I'll show you here because I can see this. Bam, what is this? This is George's shopping list. Okay, what does he have here? He's got his animal products. He also has his plant-based produce. He has apples and oranges and berries and pineapples and pears and melons and bananas and mangoes and dates and cucumbers, zucchini, squash, pumpkin, olive, avocado, just to get started. So what does this mean? Number one, this is not a ketogenic diet plan. Absolutely not. This is relatively a moderately high carbohydrate intake. Number two, this is not a carnivore-based meal plan. There is an abundance of plant-based products inside this program. And now let me show you just two days ago, here is George St. Right. Pierre Peel a banana. It's like this. peeling a banana, the other way around. And it's not teaching us how to peel the banana. Monkey just bite right through. And also and make it easier for eating you. a banana. So George is very happily eating a banana while following his carnivore meal plan, his ketogenic meal plan, not that George said, but many of you sending me these, these DMs and Instagram, Dolce, F you Dolce, GSP's following a ketogenic diet now. GSP's following a carnivore meal plan. No, he's not. GSP, to be fair, and I'll, I'll, I'll reach out to George. Um, I'll reach out to, to Paul. Bo I mean, George is awesome. Uh, Lindsay's jumping in right now. What's up? Howard, how are you? Good, how are you? Wonderful, thank you. Great to see you. Who? Doing well? Well, <laughs> you're just here. I have been not ranting. Have I been ranting, everyone? Feel free to leave comments there. But I just started to break down George St. Pierre's new meal plan and 
animal-based meal plan, as he calls it, under the guise of Dr. Paul Saladino. I hope I say Paul's name correctly to be respectful. And what I did just show um, Dr. Professor, Professor Howard, is I want to show you right now is the shared screen. Can You can see this, Lindsay. Is George actually yes. eating? The right way to peel a banana, it's like this. A banana, okay. Not the other way around. And it's just so so Lindsay can monkey. see this, everyone. It's a myth. Monkey just bite right through. Try it next time and make it easier for yourself. All right. Enjoy. So again, George, bam, getting down on the banana, which I think is great. And now up here, this is the shopping list for the screenshot. Oh, you got the screenshot too. All right. So Lindsay, I, I think you're up to date and everyone watching right now, Professor Lindsay Howard, Lindsay, I gave you your intro before we actually kicked off. Professor Lindsay Howard, a, a university professor, an MS or a master of science degree. She has her CSCS under the NSCA. She is a licensed registered dietitian and our lead dietitian here, thankfully for us, classing up the joint. So Lindsay is also a huge MMA fan and has worked with multiple MMA fighters with their weight cuts. So she's a very proficient college athlete herself in her in her former life, I think we could say, and a current college coach. So Lindsay, very briefly, what I was trying to do first is, yes, ranting as usual. Evan, thank you for that. Um, <laughs> with Mike's level of energy, everything sounds like a rant. Isn't that true? I'm so passionate about it. And again, I'm not bashing George here. I love George. I think George is freaking awesome. But I think George makes a lot of, of, of extreme diet mistakes. And he makes some extreme diet issues that I will. You want to stay tuned for that after Lindsay kind of gives her piece. I want to break down three very distinct milestones in George St. Pierre, Pierre's nutrition um, uh, lifestyle that has caused some serious issue, might have even cost him his career. So, Lindsay, what do you think about what George's current meal plan is? Lindsay, I think you're frozen. All right. Well, there goes that. Now, Lindsay is at inside the science lab right now. Lindsay, I don't know if you can see or hear us at the moment. You might need to change from where you are right now to your, your other office. This happens from time to time. I think all the brain trust there using, <laughs> there you go. She popped out, so she'll come back in. So again, with this, I wanted to jump back in to just show you guys, number one is the conflation of science that these fitness marketers, not George, these fitness marketers use against you. This is the problem. They use it against you. They use it against the population. They conflate these words. They conflate these terms to sell you. Now, I'm not saying that this is what Paul is doing. I don't know Paul at all. I've seen some of his work, but I do know Paul sells a supplement. And I do know Paul has a book called The Carnivore Code, The Carnivore Code, while <coughs> George St. Pierre is following an animal-based meal plan that is not a carnivore meal plan. And I hope this makes sense to you guys. I hope this makes sense. So maybe Paul, like Rob Wolf, Rob Wolf, Wolf wrote The Paleo Solution, and doesn't follow the Paleolithic diet, right? Maybe that was just a snapshot in time when they thought what they were doing, they thought what they were researching, they thought what they were saying, they thought what they were selling was correct. And maybe through time and experience and the application of the scientific method, they realized it wasn't. So maybe Paul went from being a starch or a staunch carnivore to now realizing that an omnivorous meal plan is much more healthy. That is my assumption here. I'd love to hear Professor Howard's assumption when she comes back on, but I definitely want to hear what you guys have to say about that. So please leave your comments in the, uh, the chat room here. We will jump over to that and, and answer this in a few moments for you guys. Now, also what I wanted to show here, and I think this is great, for George, and you can see a lot of the stuff he's doing. Now, check this out. Guys, it's 1.30 a.m. I just finished working for uh, the TV. It's 1.30 a.m. You know what? I was hungry, and sometimes 
you don't have to feel bad when you want to reward yourself. Enjoy. We live only once, right? All right. So there George is again. And this is a week or so ago. When is this? Let me see this just to be fair. Here. April 25th. So barely two weeks or so ago. George comes on and says, hey, guys, it's 1.30 in the morning. I just got done working, and I wanted to treat myself. And what is he eating there? He's eating highly processed, refined sugars, right? He's eating a, a bun. There's probably a burger in there. He didn't say what it was, but we can definitely see the bun. So just two weeks ago, George is eating a burger, a burger bun at 1.30 in the morning, Holy autophagy, right? All the, 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 ah, man, I'm trying not to curse. All of the conflated scientific bullet points or unscientific bullet points that are pushed into the media, pushed into the market, so overly conflated that confuses the heck out of you. What are you to do? You have George sitting here two weeks ago eating a burger at 1.30 in the morning saying, hey, guys, you only have to live once. Live once. Eat your burger in the middle of the night. No problem. Then we have one of the greatest athletes of all time saying, hey, now I'm following an animal-based diet, and here's my meal plan where... He can't now have coffee. He can't have organic dark chocolate. He can't eat a whole list of other things. Lindsay's back in the room. I'm, I'm ranting. I'm and to, to finish off, Lindsay, I just now want you to come in this, this stream of thought with me. So then we go through, Lindsay, two weeks ago, I just showed George eating a burger at 1.30 in the morning saying, hey, guys, you only live once. Eat a burger in the middle of the night after a hard day at work. And then we'll see uh, where the heck is it. There's another one of George here, intermittent fasting, right? He's, he's, he's intermittent fasting. He's going through these three and four day fasts, intermittent fasting all the way through, which he's been known to do these three, four. He was trying to do a 10 day fast, I believe, at some point. None of this is to ridicule George. None of this is to disparage George's reputation. All I'm trying to do right now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just trying to show you how fucked up the nutrition world is. Why would you not be confused? George St. Pierre a month ago was talking about intermittent fasting for three, four days at a time. Two weeks ago, he's telling you it's okay to eat burgers at 1.30 in the morning. And now he's following an animal-based meal plan that most people think is a ketogenic meal plan. The majority of those people or other in an equal a group of people think it, it's, it's a carnivore-based meal plan when in fact, George is an omnivore eating an omnivorous meal plan, which also includes, as it seems in George's life, highly processed sugars. Synthetic toxic food-like substances, which I would say, so what is a hard training, hard working person to do? Professor Howard, the floor is yours. Yeah, so, I mean, I'm sure you've talked about all of this, but my biggest thing is like, I was just watching a few videos um, of this of this doctor and there was a video, like, I just wanted like a quick little blurb, like, here's what it is. Here are the basic principles just to understand. And he's going on and sees like, there is zero consumption of vegetables or fruit. And I'm like, I literally just saw the Instagram post of all of the fruits and vegetables that are on it. So I think it's a little contradictory. Um, but one thing I do wanna say is like, these all these diets, they're all the same. They're all like, I have a catchy name and, you know, and anybody like, this is the thing with diets. We talk about the keto diet. We talk about intermittent fasting. We talk about anything like that. People think because they're eating majority protein and meat sources that that cured all their issues, but they're not taking into consideration that they've eliminated soda. They've eliminated bagels. They've eliminated like everything that's bad that was in their diet. Same thing with keto. Same thing with going like vegan. All of those diets, you are eliminating all the garbage, like all the junk. 
So they think like, oh, I stopped eating meat and now I feel so much better. Well, you stopped eating donuts and cake and, you know, energy drinks and all that stuff too. So what's the reason for why you're feeling better? It's probably not because you just stopped eating meat. Um, so that's my overall thoughts on any kind of diet like this, but I just think it's a little contradictory. It's a little back and forth, um, based on just my short kind of review of it. So with that, and, and I agree now I'll, I'll slow down because, you know, in the beginning I was super hyped up and I wanted to get this information out there and I'm working technology all by myself, no producer sitting in the other desk at the moment. So I'm trying to share these screens. Hopefully it work well. Now, this is the issue. I'm not mad at, at Paul. I'm certainly not mad at George. What I am concerned about is, is you, is, is the end user, the listener, the consumer, the client, the community, the average global citizen. This is where you guys get screwed because you look around and you're like, what do I do? What's right? I got George St. Pierre telling me I should fast. Then I got George telling me it's okay to eat burgers at 1.30 in the morning. Now George is telling me I should be following a ketogenic carnivore meal plan, a plant-based, animal-based meal plan. I don't understand it, man. And I get it, ladies and gentlemen. This is what angers me so much. And this is what, what Lindsay and I and our team and our company is, is dedicated to do. We are here to provide you the most actionable, honest, evidence-based information so you can live the life that you want to live. Let's, let's clear through the bullshit right here. George St. Pierre is following an omnivorous meal plan. He's an omnivore. He's eating like an omnivore. That's great. George St. Pierre is also a genetic specimen that won the multitude of his world titles, became one of the most dominant fighters in the history of the sport. Being an omnivore, following an omnivorous meal plan, right? Let's not get it twisted. I know George's diet. George used to work with Dr. John Berardi, a friend of mine. George worked with multiple other well-known nutritionists and diet experts and whatnot. George is a smart guy. It, now, I haven't spoken with George about this. I believe George is just having fun trying up some new stuff. He's trying on a new pair of shoes and going for a run to see if they fit well. He's jumping around enjoying it. And also, as a marketer, I believe it's good for George's IQ rating. It's good for a social media ranking. He's probably getting great engagement every time he makes a change. Not that that's what motivating George, but I'm sure that doesn't hurt put this information out here. Now, Paul, on the other hand, again, I don't know Paul. I will reach out to Paul. I will try and have a conversation with Paul because I think there's a lot of information that, that we would agree on. And I do believe there is a lot of stuff that we are going to disagree on. And I believe to Lindsay's point, the lot of the information I see Paul put out is very misleading. Number one is, well, this, the carnivore code, the ancestral diet. I mean, let's be fair here. We know without doubt our ancestors were omnivores, without doubt. Our ancestors ate what they could pick, what they could harvest, what they could kill, what they could drag home and eat. Our ancestors did not walk past a blueberry bush or an apple tree on their way to go hunt and fish. They ate everything along the way. To say anything different is false. Flat out, period, the end. Now, I also noticed something here in, in looking at the, so this is on Carnivore MD. This is Paul's site. And this, this shouldn't really be about Paul, but I think it's interesting. As I was just doing show prep sitting here before Lindsay came on, this is Dave Asprey. Dave Asprey of Bulletproof Coffee says, Paul extols the benefits of carnivorous eating. Okay. Then we have I mean, Ben Greenfield, who is probably one of the, the biggest culprits of fitness marketing masquerading as a fitness expert. And I probably would like Ben. I think we'd be buddies, but I would just bust his balls all the time for just being wrong. Um, and Paul's one of the most brilliant minds. And Ben has a, 
make such broad, sweeping, unbased claims. I'd love to speak with Ben also on hey, your place or mine, brother. We have Dr. McCola, my God, who's getting beaten up in the media for 20 some odd years for lots of fringe information. We have Mark Sisson, who says Paul Saladino is driving an incredibly compelling carnivore diet movement, but that's false. Paul is driving an omnivorous diet movement, we could say. Look at what George is doing. Like, this is so silly. But Paul or, or Mark Sisson is responsible for the, the spike in ketogenic diets back on his first appearance of the Joe Rogan podcast some three or four or so years ago as he was developing his primal kitchen and the whole primal thing. It's all fitness marketing. There's a little piece of science that's conflated for fitness marketing. Then we have Rob Wolf here, the author of The Paleo Solution, who I, I love Rob. I, I consider Rob a friend. I don't know that he considers me a friend because I speak to the science and I disagree with a lot of what Rob has said between here and there. Being a, a zone guy, then being a paleo guy, then being a keto guy that preaches fasting, Man, which one is it? Rob is a brilliant guy. So I, I got to wonder what the hell's going on here. So if you have these bright minds, these fit dudes, these, ex, I mean, success, these are all successful people, by the way. The, these guys are all millionaires. In, in, you know, I, I haven't seen their bank statements, but I'm pretty sure every one of those guys are millionaires and multi-millionaires. Some of them are, are 100 plus millionaires as far as top line revenue valuation of, of, of company assets and such. So these are multi to deca to hundred some odd millionaires, right? So these are experts at marketing. The science though, and Lindsay, I'll let you jump back in here. What bothers me most is the science does not lead the conversation. They use pieces and not, not them, but the, the, the industry in general, they use pieces of science to drive marketing campaigns. They disregard the actual science. When we have multiple of these, these you know, co-signers talking about the carnivorous, carnivorous, carnivorous movement, but we see Paul's own words. It's not carnivorous, it's omnivorous. So are we just marketing here? Are we just marketing the carnivore thing, but then telling people on the slide that they can actually eat bananas like George is doing quite clearly and blueberries and butternut squash and watermelon and everything else that goes through. We have all these toxic vegetables that are out there, but nitrate laden pork bacon is somehow okay. And blocks of highly processed cheese is somehow okay but spinach is is bad for us. This is this is scary stuff, ladies and gentlemen, because I'm educated enough to understand it. And when I read it, I have to step back and go, wait, wait, what did they just say? Let me let me read this for a second. Let me go on PubMed here and Google Scholar for a moment. Let me call up Professor Howard and fact check this briefly. So, Lindsay, you have anything else to to jump in on? Yeah, I mean, it's just, I mean, I I can't give any like specific names, but there are so many authors. And again, I don't want to group doctors in, but yeah. if you go to Barnes and Noble and you go in the section, it's like diet and nutrition. Every diet book is written by a doctor. It's yeah. always so-and-so MD. Every single one is written by a doctor. And then you look at their books, their line of books. And it's like 15 years ago, they wrote a book about how you shouldn't eat carbs. And then last year they wrote a book, how you should always eat carbs. And it's like, everybody kind of just jumps on these different waves, whatever's popular, whatever's going to sell. And then we'll promote and market a book or a lifestyle or a movement um, in that topic. That's, that's popular. Like you look at all these vegan people, they're like, Oh yeah, I was vegan, but now I'm not. Um, so there's, there's just a lot of back and forth, I think um, with a lot of these people and it's false advertising. Like yeah. if you, if you're like, okay, carnivore, carnivore diet, let's Google it. And then you're like, oh, the grocery list has this entire list of fruits and vegetables. Well, that's not a carnivore diet. Yeah. Carnivores eat meat and solely meat, whereas omnivores is a combination, which is what humans should be consuming. So I will say, I mean, again, not to be like bashing this dude. I just scrolled through like a lot of his Instagram posts. And I agree with a lot of the stuff that he says. Like he had a lot of stuff up there about um, the, what we've previously talked about, about, you know, COVID cases being so high and so prevalent and the deaths being so high and people who are 
overweight and obese and had all these metabolic comorbidities. Yep. And we talked about the fact that, um, what was it? Krispy Kreme was giving out free donuts to people who showed their proof of vaccination card. Sure. I'm like, what is going on? So in that sense, like he has a lot of good stuff that I agree with that people should in general be healthier people. Yep. Um, he had made another great point that said people look to weight loss to get them healthy. And that's like the whole paradigm where it should be, you should become healthy. And by becoming healthy, the weight loss will, will follow, which yeah. is exactly correct. I, I completely agree with that. Um, but to claim all these things about how, like what you're saying, pork and, and pork fat and things like that are, are going to cure your diseases. That's just, it's false advertising. And what I mentioned before, anybody who follows like a typical American diet, like a, a not so healthy diet full of processed foods, and they started this, they started following this guy and eat exactly what he told you to eat. Everybody's going to feel better. You've eliminated the crap from your diet and you're eating pretty good food. Yeah. But that's not what they're selling. So that's just my thoughts on it. No, Lindsay, I, I agree. I love it getting a little bit of feedback. So I hit mute, unmute when you want to shut me up for sure. I'll, I'll try and be brief on this. I agree. So guys and gals, what do you think about it? Leave it in the comments after this video post. We're going to move on now to the chat, to the Q&A. I wanted to keep these videos more concise. I've heard your feedback, ladies and gentlemen. Lots of, of more concise quick hits will be put out. We will post-produce this video. It's going to go live. We'll cut out just the first 30 minutes of this into a separate video so you can come back, you can listen to that. But now we're going to jump into the Q&A section. So if you guys want to listen to the Q&As, definitely stay here. We will have timestamps. The legend Dave B will come on and he will timestamp all of these for you. There are a lot of great questions that probably affect your life. We're going to run through these slightly faster rate. We're going to machine gun through. I won't be nearly as verbose as I normally am, God forbid. Um, but definitely stay here and be a part of it if you want. Let me remove that one. For, okay, that's perfect. Now let's jump through here. Paul says, thank you for the content. I exercise in the morning at 6.30, an hour of cardio or an hour of weights. I do this fasted. Would you say this is correct or preferably have breakfast. Well, Lindsay just disappeared. So who knows what happened? So I will answer this one for you, Paul. There is no correct or incorrect. You're doing awesome. I love exercise. I love movement. I love the fact that you're waking up, you're moving your body. You are focused on health and fitness. Now, if we wanted to level up a little bit, we might consider doing the cardio fasted and doing the training, the, the, the weight resistance bearing training slightly fed. Why is that? Because we can introduce glucose into the bloodstream to enhance the training effect, allowing you to train at higher levels of intensity, thereby to produce greater levels of gains. Possibly the goal is muscle protein synthesis. We can add one or two or three reps to the weight you're using or one or two, three percent to the same repetitions. Or maybe we can get through the same reps with the same weight at a slightly faster pace. What would I do in your case? We work with a lot of people in such situations. I might throw a little bit of cold pressed beet juice in. Bang. Drop a little bit of that out of the gate. If you have maybe 45 or 90 minutes prior to training, I might eat something a little more complex. That is just a quick hit from me. Lindsay, you have anything briefly on this? I said there's this is not a bad situation. This is a first world problem here. High five, you're doing great. You might want to think about fasted cardio and slightly fed resistance if that's what your schedule allows. Yeah, just quickly. Well, first of all, sorry, I'm having zero luck with techno technology today. It's fine. Um, but no, I would never recommend any sort of high intensity, even moderate intensity cardio or weight training, which would be considered high intensity in most cases. I would never recommend doing that fasted. Um, you need the fuel. You, you use up energy while you're sleeping. Um, so I would absolutely have something small, some sort of carbohydrate source prior to doing anything beyond low intensity steady state cardio. Um, absolutely something small, have like a coffee and an apple. I don't know, something very small just to fuel you for your workout. You're going to be fatigued. You're going to be sluggish. You're probably going to dip. Your, your blood glucose might dip. 
and you're going to feel, you know, that hypoglycemic effect, shaky, hungry, um, all those things will reduce the, the efficacy of your workout. So anything beyond low intensity, steady state cardio, definitely have a little something to eat. Agreed. I'm with you. Let's, let's move it on. Um, Nam says, listen to your body. Amen to that. Jeff E says the Dolce way release date, probably within the week. So we had the first few tubs that are going out to our internal influencers first, getting the hands on some of our B2B peers, but you will hear about the Dolce way pro being released very soon. This is a cold process, cross flow, micro filtered, grass fed whey protein isolate, a four ingredient or five ingredient formula made only with real ingredients. Our vanilla is actually flavored with real vanilla. Believe it or not, our chocolate is flavored with cacao. That's it, right? That's it. Costs us a hell of a lot more money than our competitors. And we are going to sell it for less money than our competitors because you guys deserve that. Now, not everyone needs a whey protein isolate. I'm going to tell you, only 10% of you need a whey isolate. And even then, you only need it 10% of the time. Worst salesman in the world. But when you do need a whey protein isolate, you know which one to get moving forward. And Lindsay, yours is on the way, by the way. Ben Boyer, what's up, Ben? Good to see you. Amy, good evening. Hello, hello. Jeff E. Dolce Way, it's coming soon. Brian Henley in the house. What's up, Brian? Good to see you, Savage. Um, Nam says, carbonated mineral water with my espresso in the morning. Well, I understand that. For those of us refined pinky up espresso drinkers, the carbonated water is meant to clean the palate. You actually swirl and spit before putting the, the delicacy of the, the black gold, as I call it, um, into your mouth. So if Lindsay, if you have anything to add to that. It's very fancy. Very fancy. It's very a step fancy. above my, my caffeine consumption. <laughs> yeah, yeah, are, are you a Dunkin' Donuts caffeine? Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, no, actually every day. <laughs> every, every day, every day. <laughs> Um, Brandon says, is it okay to have moderate carbs right before bed or is that a no-go to get shredded? And that's the key here. If your goal is to get shredded, Lindsay, I'll let you answer. Yeah. If your goal is to get shredded, then probably a no-go. Um, unless for maybe in your case, you have a strenuous workout later at night. Um, I have a lot of clients who train like jujitsu and things like that. And their classes go to like eight and nine o'clock at night. So yeah. absolutely you should eat something after that type of workout to help your body recover. Um, but those people are also not the types that are trying to get shredded. So for the most part, but no, I would, I would keep it, you know, one to two hours before you go to sleep, have something small. Um, you know, if you're going to sleep at 10 o'clock, probably don't eat dinner beyond, I would say eight o'clock. Um, and, and carbohydrate intake, if you're trying to get shredded, my biggest suggestion is to sandwich it around your workout. So if you're eating, you know, however many grams of carbohydrate you're having in a day, have the bulk of it prior to your workout and after your workout. Um, that way you're fueling your workout, you're going to use it up. And then after you've essentially emptied your tank, you're just filling the tank back up. Um, the problem with people that are trying to get shredded, if you're eating too many carbs and I'm not knocking carbs, you have to have carbs. I would never recommend uh, eliminating carbs. Yeah. But if you have too many carbs at one time, your body doesn't have a place to put them. So they need to be stored in a different manner. Um, so making sure that you're you're fueling what you're doing and you're pretty much replenishing what you just used. Boom. Oh. John Johnson says, F you Dolce. Hello, Professor Lindsay. I've been wondering, does brushing teeth before lists affect the fasted state? Just curious, Lindsay. Well, John, my question would be, do you swallow your toothpaste? Ooh, spit or swallow, <laughs> John. That is the question. Yes. Yikes. So, I mean, we could get super technical because carbohydrate absorption and digestion begins in your mouth. So, I don't know the caloric content of toothpaste, but it would be so negligible that it probably would not have an effect. It's, you're not going to have a spike in insulin just from, from brushing your teeth. Yeah. Um, so, no, I definitely brush your teeth. You don't want to be the, the bad breath guy at the gym. No, my goodness. Or in your house. That No, I'm with you. <laughs> Um, Brian says, good morning from Milwaukee. What's up, Brian? Good to see you. Jay-Z, does fasting really help with longevity of lifespan in the long run? Any science that you've come across recently? 
I mean, I know that there's tons and tons out there, but what, you know, any consensus? I would have to, honestly, I would have to read more into this. Um, I think fasting has been around, um, but I don't think around long enough to have that much research in terms of your whole lifespan. Yeah. And there are so, so many other factors and variables that you would have to consider. So if we're talking research, if we put a thousand people on, you know, like an intermittent fasting type diet, you would have to have every single other aspect of their lifestyle controlled in order to find out if fasting really was the reason why they lived longer or shorter. Um, so, you know, they would have to not drink ever, not smoke, have minimal stress, sleep ev perfect every single night. Um, and everything else would have to be on point. So it would be really, really difficult to actually like quantify that in research. Um, but I mean, in more general terms, I would have to look into that a little bit more. Yep. And I agree with that. So it's when fasting for how long, when do we start fasting from birth, fasting from puberty, fasting from middle age or fasting as a geriatric, like fasting at the onset of a metabolic condition or disease when, so if we eliminate the concept of fasting and we say, Hey, we're eating a Mediterranean style diet, which is very close to what we uh, endorse here as far as a healthful whole food eating plan. Well, if we're eating like that, then how does fasting compare? That would be the question. So we always say we always, we're, we're an education team here. We always say, always ask the question as compared to what? Fasting as compared to eating McDonald's six times a day, you only eat McDonald's one time a day. All right, maybe that, yeah, that probably is going to help you a little bit. But outside of that, it'd be really hard to say. But I will say with, with, with great confidence, a healthful, whole food, omnivorous meal plan devoid of synthetic toxic chemicals, processed foods, hydrogenated oils, with moderate and consistent exercise, daily outdoor activity, unconditional love, joy, laughter, having a life filled with purpose beats everything, beats everything. Live your life like that and don't get too caught up in, it, in the, the BS. Chris Rocco, what's up, Chris? Zaitan says, Fedor, the goat. Um, Kodo, F you, Dolce. Did you see Mike Perry talking about being on a no carb diet? Help a brother out, man. I'm, I'm a fan of Perry, but I don't know that. Uh, I mean, it, you know, Perry, he can find me, he can, he can give us a call. We'll, we'll take, and I'll also tell him how to invest in real estate, too. I know, you know, I tried to give Perry a little uh, advice on how to uh purchase uh real estate 20% or more below market value. I don't think he took me up on that. I'd be shocked to see if he had any dollars left over from that paycheck. I would have took his 100 grand and turned it into 300 already for sure. I'm actually going to do a video on how doing the opposite of what Grant Cardone told me 10x my money. So I actually 10x my dollars, real estate dollars by not listening to Grant Cardone cuz Grant Cardone said don't buy real estate. Don't buy your own home. I'll show you in a different video. Once we launch the new channel though, ladies and gentlemen, our new channel is about to launch. It will be phenomenal. This channel will still continue on. The new channel is going to kill it. Professor Howard will be coming with us to the new channel. So don't worry. Don't worry. Chris Rocco says no coffee or chocolate. Um, so many health benefits. That is the truth. Thoughts? Thought lots of red meat is bad. Well, Lots of red meat can be bad, but what kind of red meat? What is the quality of the red meat? Where did it come from? How is it prepared? How is it processed? Like as compared to what? Lindsay, any thoughts on that? Yeah. So like, that's the thing. And we, I could talk about <clears throat> the, I don't even want to say stone age, but like old age thinking that high cholesterol will kill you. Yeah. Well, it's a combination of high cholesterol and high triglycerides and the triglycerides come from sugary fatty type foods. So if somebody is consuming an extremely healthy whole foods diet and eating a decent amount of red meat, it's totally fine. But if you're eating steaks on the weekends and we'll use McDonald's as your example, all week, French fries, oil, all that stuff, then yeah, it's probably going to be bad. So it depends on what the rest of the, the picture, the picture looks like. Um, it depends on you as an individual, but in general, too, way too much of anything is a bad thing. So except for coffee, that's it. Duh. Yeah. Except and for coffee. Yeah. 
I'm with you. I agree. Um, red meat, yeah, a little bit of red meat every day. A little bit of, of chicken, a little bit of fish, a little bit of, 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 of you know, I mean, is, is Paul saying hemp seeds are bad, by the way? Like, is our hemp seeds bad? Are, are hemp seeds and chia seeds bad? Is that what's being said? All seeds and nuts. All seeds and nuts are bad. I think they fell in the toxic category. Toxic. So they're they're toxic. And this kale what, and spinach. Kale, I, I saw he said something to the effect of like, kale is not your friend, but like red meat is. Does that mean I can go to In-N-Out Burger and I can get their burgers? I can eat that. That's okay. But I can't go and, and have a little bit of torn kale in my salad or steamed kale. I can't have any of that because of, of oxalates or you know, something along those lines that they pull one piece, one, one data point, they conflate it. And unfortunately, it seems like to sell stuff. That's, that's the problem. And I, I you know, um, I, it's not fair of me to speak for Paul or, or anyone else. So I, I certainly want to say, Hey, this is what it seems like. It's certainly confusing. So maybe we can get them on, on the show here and, and have a, a deeper conversation just so I can learn. I'd love to be educated and learn more. Um, Dubson says, Paul Saladino, Saladino goes back on his own information so much. It's unreal. I'm unfamiliar, but I'll, I'll take your word on that. Chris Rocco agreed. Anyone following out? Saladino is lost. Yikes. Um, Evan, what's up, Evan GSP? Is this shit no matter what? Well, I mean, he's a great athlete, but it doesn't mean he is. Eh. I don't know that George is telling you to follow his meal plan, though, to be fair to George. That's also I don't I think he's just saying, hey, this is what I'm doing. Like I'm a huge, I'm a, I'm a world famous multimillionaire gifted genetic specimen. And I'm a little fucking bored now at 40 years old. So I'm trying to find new fun stuff to do. Maybe that's going on. I get that. I'm not mad at that at all. I, I didn't see George telling you to do it by the way. So, you know, let's, let's go there. Um, Joe Blow, GSP's hair is, I think it kind of looks cool. I do wonder if it's real though. I mean, real in that was that his biologically born hair or is that newly seeded and grown hair? George, I'd like to know that. Tell me who your doctor is, by the way. I think it's um, seeded. I think it's seed. I do too. Cause poof. And all of a sudden now it's being super rocked. It would have, in my opinion, it would have come and gone a few times over the last decade or so. Right. And, uh, you know, I, I, I am follic fo follically challenged. I think we could say, although I can grow out of just a little bit and people like don't know, I, kind of have to shave my head but once it gets too long then it's like dude shave your head right hey, mullets right. are coming back what's that mullets are making a comeback Ooh, i could could i do the mullet and just like i what I, i'll do is i'll get all that the, the hair seeds from the side and then implant them just to the mullet area and i'll, I'll just be like mike pile rolling around uh, just playing. Yes. Ranting, ranting. Okay. That's me ranting. Of course. Um, Paul literally isn't even a carnivore anymore. He has gone back on so much of his own information. I'm not aware of that, but that it makes sense. Um, uh, with Mike's level of energy, everything sounds like a rant. That is very true. I feel bad for my wife. Never heard of this St. Pierre guy. Are you kidding me? Chris Come Rocco, on. George St. Pierre, get out of here. Oh, Chris, we love you, brother. Ben Boyer, professor Lindsay in the house. Amen. Jeff E, Dolce release date coming soon. You will hear about it in the next two weeks at max. Make sure you follow me on Instagram. By the way, I put Lindsay's Instagram handle into the chat section. So everyone find Lindsay's Instagram. Definitely follow her on Instagram and uh, send her a, a quick little hello message, comment and like on all of her brilliant posts that she has. Um, JS, I wish I had the genetics of GSP. That's true. Yes, GSP has been duped. I don't know if he's duped. Uh, I just think he's a little bored. That's personal opinion, by the way. George can certainly correct me. Gronus, is the trap bar deadlift to, to a similar... Sorry, let me shake it out here. I'm screaming so much. Is the trap bar deadlift similar to a belt squat or a normal back squat in terms of working the same muscles? The deadlift on pull day and then squats the following day on push day. Lindsay, you want that question? What's up, Henrik? I have to read it again, I think. I, think I mean, a trap spirit. bar deadlift is similar to a squat. Like a conventional deadlift is very similar to a squat pattern, less of a hinge than like an RDL or, or stiff legged deadlift. Yep. Um, but it's still different. It depends. I mean, it all depends on where the load is. So, you know, you're pulling from the ground on any sort of deadlift, whereas a squat, you're, you're essentially pushing that weight up. Um, right. So it's definitely going to be similar muscle groups, like the, your large muscle groups, your back, quads, glutes, hamstrings, all that stuff. But some are just going to be worked 
a little bit more. I would always recommend a, a good blend of squatting movements and deadlift deadlifting movements. Um, and squatting movements, I don't squat with a barbell. I I squatted with a barbell like a couple times in re recent weeks. I was like, no, this is, I'm over this. I'm not in college it. anymore. I do lunges, step ups, walking lunges, or side lunges, you know, things like that to, to hit the same muscle group. So I got to read this again. Yeah, again, similar muscles, but it's it's just going to be a little bit different. Um, and I think this is a follow up to his question. Finds it hard to squeeze in, push, pull legs on separate days due to it. So Henrik is a martial artist, primarily a boxer. He's training in the, the MMA scope. And it, it sounds like he's like, man, he's trying to get everything in. And it's a little hard to get it all in, recover, and then be fresh for the next session. Yeah. And that's the the, uh, the conundrum there for us. Yeah. So, I mean, maybe just switch to an upper and lower day. So yep. just do a, a total leg day where you're, you know, pushing and pulling or hinging and squatting. Um, and then on your upper body day, you're doing, you know, horizontal and vertical push, pull, little shoulder work, hit the biceps. Bam. Yeah. Done. And then you just out, two days. Out. Agreed. I love it. Yeah. We have super arm says, got my Piedmontese beef and it was quality. Thanks. I'm moving back East and will continue to order it. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're in the club. Click the link below because you want to get the only grass-fed, grass-finished beef I trust to feed my own family. You need to go here. This episode is brought to you by Certified Piedmontese. Go to Piedmontese.com and feed your family the same way I feed mine. Right now, use promo code DOLCE to save 25% on grass-fed, grass-finished beef with free delivery. That's Piedmontese.com. And I think this would actually be approved by Dr. Paul Saladino. Uh, we we do, we exclusively use the Piedmontese company, Piedmontese.com. Use the Dolce promo code to save 25%. Plus you get free shipping to your door within two days. We get zero percentage of your use of that code. And that's very important for me to let you know. We get zero dollars. Use the code or don't use the code does not matter to me and my income. That discount is 100% passed on to you guys. I love the certified Piedmontese beef. The quality of beef is beef is absolutely amazing. But I will say, why do I endorse certified Piedmontese? Well, the quality of beef is outstanding. And there are other providers of high quality beef. And I have some friends who are hunters and they gift me beef throughout the year and, and, and steak and um, um, you know elk and bison and, and, and um, venison and, and all sorts of great wild game. Um, but that being said, the, the team at Piedmontese, when the coronavirus hit, most of the other food providers in the nation, they surged their pricing. They started to increase their pricing and they took advantage of the, the, the demand. The whole world was terrified. The team at Piedmontese did not raise their prices. And in fact, they came up with packages to reduce their prices. They started bundling their grass-fed, grass-finished beef into five pound packs that they could give deeper discounts. Their team was working literally round the clock, through, you know, eight hour shifts, 24 hour shifts to keep up with the demand and they never raised their price. That's why I, I support the Piedmontese team. That's why we fill our freezer every month with, with certified Piedmontese. And I just want to take a moment and really share that because it's not about profits. It's not always about profits, right? It, it, there's something more, something greater. And that's why you, you see how rarely I ever endorse any company. I endorse the Piedmontese team because of the quality of humans behind the brand and then the high quality product that they do deliver. And that's incredible. So uh, that being said, certified Piedmontese, click the link below. Little Holographic says, I've been on an animal-based diet unknowingly, but I've since been on an earth-grown diet and feel much better. The Dolce diet, by the way, and that's what it is. Earth-grown, healthful, whole food. That's the way it works, ladies and gentlemen. Mike is nailing it right now. George is confused and misguided here. I appreciate that. Thank you. This is what I do. I mean, in, in a mixed martial arts fight, you know, a tactical, strategic um, discussion, I think George St. Pierre certainly um, has the, uh, the, 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 the alpha on me. 
when it comes to, you know, a robust nutrition discussion, you know, this is what we do 24 hours a day, seven days a week for me personally since 1993 professionally. So I think you could say I'm a little experienced uh, with this. And then we have the amazing brain power and experience and, and academic knowledge of, of Professor Howard here that just really, again, classes up the joint quite a bit, as you guys understand. Um, Not quite yeah. a season. What's that, Lynn? But not quite as seasoned. Not well. What, yeah, that's. You look at this face. You do not want to be this seasoned. <laughs> you, 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 you stay. You, you stay the young, fresh talent uh, with the the, the, the the amazing mind, and I'll be the the, the grizzled like you know, Rottweiler and the junkyard is kind of the way I feel. Um, yeah, eat whole foods, everybody. I'm like that old man. You know, get off my lawn. It's like eat more kale. Sorry, Paul. Eat me, eat, eat more healthful whole foods. Um, Jim Trister's in the house. Can't stay long, but gosh, I don't understand how come you and Lindsay keep relying on science. <laughs> Jim Trister, oh, brother, I love you, man. I love you, Jim. I miss you, my friend. Jim Trister, just an amazing, um, successful businessman, but father and human, just one of my favorite people inside the Dolce world. Um, GSP is one of the goats for sure. No, of course he is. Of course he is. Um, JS says, GSP said on his recent Joe Rogan and Lex Friedman podcasts that he explicitly recommended he cannot recommend fasting to people because he doesn't know how other people will react. Well, that's fair. I appreciate it. And I, this is why I say I'm not bagging on George for any of this stuff. Like, I think he's just an athlete just trying to have some fun, change it up. Awesome. More power than him. The problem is it's often conflated, but then I kind of look over the fence and see what Paul's doing. Eh, that's a little, you're the carnivore MD, but you're putting George on a plant-based diet. I would call it a plant-based diet, not an animal-based diet. Because let's pull this up real quick. Let me see if I can ping this back, um, add to the stream. Bam. Look at that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So there's 15 plant based products. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there's nearly double, nearly double, nearly double the plant-based products on the grocery list that Dr. Paul put out there, but they still call it an animal-based diet and even a carnivore diet. That makes no sense. It makes no sense. We say, yeah, man, I'm an omnivore. 90% of my grocery list is from the plant-based world. I have steak, I have chicken, I have fish, I have eggs, I have some whey protein, we'll have butter and ghee, um, eh. right? I mean, so that's seven. I have hemp seeds and chia seeds and, 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 and black beans, and we do have kale, we have spinach, we have amaranth, we have chia seeds, we have white potato, sweet potato. I mean, we'll go through the freaking list. We have 40 to 60 different ingredients we'll eat on a weekly basis. You know, maybe six to 10 are actually animal-based. I'm the omnivore though. That's what we suggest. It just, it, it drives me, it drives me a little crazy because I think these individuals are smart enough to know better. So I don't understand why they conflate the science. I don't understand. Hold on a second here. Let, let's, let's have some fun. Oh, wait. I don't understand why they conflate the science. I don't understand why they conflate the science. I don't understand why they conflate the science. Wait a minute. Maybe I understand. We I saw it. What's that? We solved the puzzle. I think we might have solved the puzzle. How crazy is that? <laughs> that fucking pisses me off. God damn uh, it. It pisses me the fuck off. Like, why not just tell the fucking truth and help people find helpful ways to live their best life and not conflate the, the freaking science? Why not just tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth? In my opinion, they're not telling the truth. 
That bothers the fuck out of me because then people get confused and they go down these shitty rabbit holes of all these exclusionary restrictive dietary practices. They develop this terrible self-image of their self. They constantly fail. They don't feel good. They can't perform well. And then they, they're like, man, nothing works. So F it. I might as well just go back to doing what I was doing in the first place. That gets me so freaking pissed off here. And I will say, do you know how much money I turned down by not endorsing keto, by not endorsing synthetic toxic chemicals and sports supplements and weight loss pills? Do you know how much money I would have made? Three to $12 million, true, true, true numbers, guaranteed through $3 million in contracts. If I wanted to sell this real fucking numbers, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, I didn't sell out for that. All, what do I do here? Eat healthful whole foods and wide variety. I got a cookbook if you want to learn how to cook a little bit better. We have a, a diet online platform. If you want to click the link below, four-week and 12-week plan, we'll teach you how to eat better, how to put it all together. We have 200 recipes if you want that. Or you can just hang out with us and listen to these free Q&As. And we'll answer all your questions for free. And then just go and start to implement the stuff we say for free. You don't have to buy, you don't have to buy anything. Just hang out with us for an hour a week or more. And we'll, we'll answer the questions. It, it bothers the hell out of me, man. When my peers run around and they take advantage, in my opinion, they take advantage of the good nature of the public, the trusting nature of the public, the need of the public. That bothers me. Sorry for getting so heated and passionate, but man, it, it bothers the hell out of me. It, it's not fair to you guys. It's not fair. I just think it's not fair to to preach things like what I was saying before, how mi misleading it is. Like, I, I, it's just all these different like, you know, keywords and big terms and 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 flashy kind of marketing things. They're like, oh, get healthy, like live your best life, blah blah blah. But you, they just put a grocery list out that's like twenty ingredients. You're gonna only eat twenty ingredients for the rest of your life. Yeah. Who's living like that? Yeah. Like, here's a list of the things that you cannot have. And here's a list of the things that are approved. And then it's called a carnivore diet, but half of the page is plants. So I, it's, I mean, it's all about money, all about money, it, but. It certainly seems to be right. And that's freaking unfortunate. Mm -hmm. And we think back to George, let me hold on. I want to show you just from his page. So. This is, all right, love it. This is George nice. eating the burger on April 25th, okay? And one second here as it loads. This is George on April 25th. Look at that body. Like, so why can't I just eat burgers then? Why can't I just eat burgers then? And this is George on the track getting the, a workout, just looking like an awesome fit human being two days after eating the burger, right? Like, what, what's what's going on with that? Look at him performing here. How confusing is this? How offsetting is this? And as we continue on, well, here's George eating a, a banana, banana. teaching like us how to eat, eat a banana. Well, that's not carnivore, by the way. And then him talking about being on the, the, the animal-based diet from the carnivore MD, which is filled with, with plant stuff. So anyway, I, we're beating a dead horse now. But... You can see how frustrating it is and how confusing. And I believe how they intentionally twist the science to sell their stuff. Man, put your stuff out there. That's great. Sell your stuff. If it's high quality, great. Put it out there. Sell it. But God damn it, you, you can be honest and run a great company. I probably run a bigger company than Paul does, to be fair. We don't have you, everyone listening, all the fitness people listening, you can run in a really big, amazing, successful, profitable company and just tell the truth the whole time. You can actually, you can actually do that. You can truly do that. Trust me, you can freaking do that. Just tell the truth. And the people who need you to buy your products and services, they will when they need you. You don't have to lie and conflate science in order to slang your product. 
at them. You can just be honest the whole time and they will find you. Then they will refer you. Then your business will grow. It's amazing how well that works, by the way. I'm just saying, if anybody's interested, we do have a, a mentorship and we run a mastermind group if you want to be a part of it. I can teach you how to do that, by the way. I mean, we are closed though because we're filled up. Um, can you tag Lindsay's IG? Yes, we already did that. I did that. So definitely scroll through and look. Um, Dubson says, Dr. Baker is a person to talk to. I'll actually reach out to Sean. I consider Sean a friend. Sean and I had him on the podcast a while ago. We, <clears throat> excuse me, we both agreed to disagree. I like Sean. I think Sean actually believes what he's saying, though. I don't think Paul believes what he's saying. Or I think what Paul says is so contrary. He's conflicting. Why is George eating bananas? Why is George eating bananas? That doesn't make sense. He's not a carnivore, but anyway, I mean, we'll get fucking crazy into it. Um, Nick, what's up, Mike? Did the girls get their summer care packages? Bro, no, not yet. Nick, my man, I did tell me more. Man, tell me more. Uncle Nick. Uncle Nick from Chicago. Uncle Nick from Chicago. Appreciate you, brother. We'll, we'll let's talk more. Shoot me an email, my man. Um, Lindsay is class. Great addition. Amen. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mike, love seeing you on Leo's channel. I appreciate that, man. Love being on uh, Leo, Leo and longevity. Love being on Leo's channel. That was awesome. Uh, always awesome being on with Leo. Uh, don't eat plants. Here's all the fruit you should eat. Oh, I know, right? So they said something to the effect of you can't eat plants, but you can't eat fruit. Okay. You want to confuse the population just a little bit more, by the way. Um, I would love to see maybe Paul. And again, if, if Paul comes through, cause I'm sure he's going to get tagged in this stuff and I, man, it's not a dispute. I don't know. Maybe it is or not. Dude, just post a list of everything people can eat. What just come up with. I did. We have a massive grocery list, everything that you can eat. It's called living lean, the living lean list, the living lean cookbook. It's a completely omnivorous meal plan. We have, we have vegan plans for those who are philosophically aligned with being a vegan and a vegetarian. That's cool. I think you can be healthier being an omnivore, but hey, if you have a philosophical issue, sure, we have, we have that out there. You're nut-free or dairy-free and gluten-free. If you have some sort of allergy um, to that, then hey, that's fine. But we our grocery lists are everywhere. I'd love to see a grocery list because that is an omnivorous grocery list. That is not a ketogenic nor a corn carnivorous grocery list. That's actually uh, uh, interesting. You got me thinking there. Um, what else? Uh, uh, Lindsay, can you answer this one? Aquiro says, is cholesterol bad? And the cholesterol, is cholesterol in eggs good or bad? Yeah, so this is like very common misconception, I'll say, is that like everybody their whole life is told if you have high cholesterol, it's the worst thing ever. And you're going to have a heart attack and you're going to die. Wow. Well, the problem the issues that come with cholesterol are not going to come unless you also have high triglycerides and a, a stressful environment in your blood vessels. And again, I'm not a doctor, but I teach physiology. So we talk about this stuff. And what I found, like I, I test, we do finger pricked cholesterol tests in, all, in my classes as a lab. And there are so many student athletes, extremely healthy student athletes who have high cholesterol. I'm like, well, do your parents have high cholesterol? And they're like, yep. Okay. Cholesterol is a genetic thing for sure. Yep. Um, and the other thing is there's so much research. If you just look it up is that if you eliminate cholesterol from your diet, some people, their, their blood levels of cholesterol might go down, but we produce cholesterol naturally. And it's a genetic thing. If you're going to produce a lot or, or not a lot. Um, yes, you can raise your HDL levels by, you know, adjusting your diet a little bit, but there's a ceiling for everybody. So, <clears throat> Is cholesterol bad or is it good? It's you need it. It's it's a transporter of, of of fat pretty much in your blood. That's what it is. It's a it's a lipoprotein, and you need cholesterol for proper biology for proper physiology. So, are eggs horrible for you? No, they're not horrible for you. They're awesome. I eat eggs almost every day. And for people like I know people prefer the egg white. Most of the cholesterol comes in the in the egg yolk. All of the cholesterol. Um, and that's where most of the nutrients come from. So no, I would never suggest somebody to stop eating eggs because they have high cholesterol, which is probably what's going to happen if you go to the doctor and your cholesterol is high. They're going to be like, oh, 
don't eat red meat and stop eating eggs. Well, you've just eliminated so many nutrients that are good for you. Um, so if you take care of the rest of the things, like not eating a lot of sugary processed foods, uh, you know, reducing your stress. If you're a smoker, try to quit smoking and all those things. Having high cholesterol is not going to kill you. Yeah, I, I agree. And the science is pushing that way. And I don't have the science in, in front of me. Um, so we don't want to speak out of turn. God forbid. You don't want to speak out of turn here. So we want to give a, a, a proper um, answer here. But number one is you look at hereditary. You look at what your family history is. We strongly suggest you sit down with your doctor. You know, we speak all the time about getting comprehensive blood work every six to 12 weeks. There's nothing wrong with getting your blood done every six to 12 weeks, going to sit with your doctor a minimum every six months, getting a comprehensive wellness test done, understanding your family history. Is your dad still around? Is your dad's dad still around? That they both have massive cardiovascular disease in their 30s, 40s, 50s? Do you have any genetic component to be considered? That's something that to you know, bobbleheads on a podcast, well, we can't get down that deep and dirty with you. But in general, are eggs good or bad? Eggs are good in general for the average healthy adult. Well, how many eggs? Well, that depends on you. How many matter? Me personally, I typically eat two whole eggs and four additional whites every single day. I used to eat six whole eggs every single day when I was going through my powerlifting phase. As a 45-year-old man, that probably becomes excessive. As a 25-year-old man, I was a fucking monster and did pretty damn well. But that's me. That's personally. Now, cardiovascular disease does run on the fa my father's side. Insulin issues run on my maternal side. That being said, I've been aware of that and, and addressed that since I've been in my 30s. I have perfect blood work. Now, I would assume I am worse off than some of you. I can't say all of you because I know people who've like, God, they lost their parents when, you know, their dad was younger than me, let's say. So knock on wood. Big picture here. Go get your blood work done. Analyze the data. Understand the data. But I will say the science clearly, well, the science seems to show that inflammatory markers as a result of highly processed sugars are much more damaging to cardiovascular health than fat-containing, healthful, earth-grown whole foods, which could come from grass-fed, grass-finished meat, or free-range eggs, or wild-caught salmon, if you will. So kind of a, a bigger answer than maybe you were looking for, because there is no small soundbite answer here. We want to give you the education to really do a deeper dive into your own life. Yeah, I think it goes back to like correlation or causation versus correlation. Yeah. Like, yeah, people who have heart disease and have heart attacks and things like that might have high cholesterol. So it's that's like the blame. That's that's where all the blame is placed. But there's, yeah. again, so many other factors that everybody has. Triglycerides, stress, former smokers, drinkers, things like that. So I think it take cholesterol is like the big thing that everybody's afraid of. But that's not that's not what's only causing these issues. So yeah. just something to kind of consider. Great point. Nothing in a vacuum and, and people will, they tend to act like it is and it's not like you, you don't live in a vacuum. There's so many cofactors that contribute to our health and or our wellness or the manifestation of disease. Brian says, any recommendations on what exercises I should do for a 20 or a 10 minute morning routine. Now, you know, we have the 20 minute morning. I'll briefly say it and I'll get let Lindsay answer here. Our 20 minute morning consists of five minutes of deep breathing and meditation. 10 minutes of vigorous exercise, the body weight squat, the push up, the V up, the burpee and the plank repeated twice for one minute each. Vigorous means as fast as you can go with perfect form. Hopefully, you can get one rep per second. Can you get 60 squats in 60 seconds? I know some people who can. 60 push-ups in 60 seconds, full-length push-ups. I know some people who can. 
Burpees, of course, is if you're getting 10 to 20, that's pretty dang good. Plank is just a 60 second plank hold. V ups is challenging balance wise. Once you get the balance locked in, and V ups, it's it's a straight extension, heels on the floor, knuckles on the floor, and then we're piking up to that that center position at the top. All relative to your age and stage of life. If you only get three perfect form body weight squats in a minute when you first start sitting down into a chair safely, high five to you. Oh, I freaking love it. And then tomorrow we'll try and do three with better form or we'll try and do four with the same form. Anyway, th that's our 20 minutes. And then the last five minutes we send we, just sitting down, setting out five goals for ourselves to conquer the day. Go ahead, Lindsay. Yeah, so I definitely agree with that. Um, again, broadening the question, if this is just like a 10 minute morning routine, you know, to start your day and then you're going to do your actual workout later, then I think it could be a little bit different. Um, yeah. Maybe you want to do like yoga or something like that to get your mind right for the day. But if that's like the only 10 minutes you have to do, you have to do anything like physical, then I completely agree. Compound movements, things that are efficient, um, which is exactly what Mike just said. Squats and push ups are the, the, the gold standards. If yeah. you only want to do squats and push ups for 10 minutes, that's perfectly fine. Throw in a plank, get a little core, although you're going to be hitting core with, with the, both of those movements. Um, but it, it depends. I think if it was, you know, something to add on to add to your day, I would do more of like a meditation, yoga, stretch type thing. Um, but no, if it's like you're only 10 minutes and you're going to cram it in, then you want to be as efficient as possible. Yep. I agree with that. All movement is good movement. Consistent movement is the best movement. What we say is do something that you enjoy, but challenges you which forces you to get a little bit better at it and do it every day. I don't believe in taking days off. We don't take days off. What we can do is we can vary what we do on a given day. I'm not going to do squats every single day, but I do want to do something every day, a minimum of 30 minutes of activity. Sometimes it's literally just walking around the block. Sometimes it's just doing the sports stretch, let's say from my UFC fit workout, which I freaking love, which was developed in conjunction with my good friend, Mr. Kenta Sakai, who's one of the, I think my, my, my famous um, um, sport stretching gurus, uh, by the way. Sometimes it's fucking wrestling with these college kids, which is insane. But my point is it's every single day day, we should be doing something that is physical and is active and is considered exercise and, and gets good blood flow and, and challenges us. And, us. and it, it switches our mind because this is, it's as emotional as it is physical. And this is something a lot of people miss is the act of exercising isn't just about, I, I put a post out today on Instagram and I say like, you know, ripped abs and tight asses. Like, yeah, that's, that's cool and all. But lifestyle change, like that is key. That's the sexiest fucking thing out there. It's, it's like, yeah, you got a nice fucking abs. Great. You got a tight ass. Okay. Yeah. Now what? Like, are you healthy? Are you fit? Can you, can you walk long distances? I know people who look great. They can't go up a fucking flight of stairs. I'm friends with a lot of bodybuilders, man. They can't go grocery shopping. They got to send their wife to go grocery shopping because Mr. Fucking Big for Nothing is sweating through fucking his T-shirt sitting in the car with air conditioning on. He's got abs and fucking veins running through his fucking biceps. Big deal, man. So point being, like, there's so much more to this thing that we do, this lifestyle. And the older I get, the more appreciative I am with movement, moving my body. And I call it athletic expression the ability to express myself athletically. I could go and play basketball right now. I suck at basketball. I could go and play and have fun. I could, I could go, if my buddy calls me and he's like, hey man, like we're going to go up to the cabin. We're going to go hiking for a few days. I'm cool. I'll, let me grab my Kelty bag. Like I'm, I can go. Like, I haven't gone hiking in, in a while. Like whatever that thing is, we're like, hey man, like we're going to go spend three days at Disney World. Cool. Like I'm not going to be the one who's got to sit down and, and take a break when the kids want to go on all the little rides. This is something that's often missed, especially in my peer group. Like I'm, I'm in that, like that, that, you know, 30 to 50 year old peer group now. And I see people like the young families and kind of the older families, man, I see some people out there that shame on them, like shame on them 
for not taking 30 minutes and going for a, a freaking walk every day, not doing some stretches and letting the belly get bigger and bigger and bigger. Like shame on them. You don't have to have the ripped abs. I don't care about that. I don't care about ripped abs when I got like photo shoots coming up or, or I got to like do something right where everyone's going to ridicule me if I don't have ripped abs, you know? Um, but, but outside of that, it's, it's more about my ability to express myself athletically. It just happens that because of that, I pretty much have year round abs, right? Not fucking super shredded year round abs, but for, certainly good enough. I'm trying, I'm trying to like, trying to humble brag here, Lindsay. Like, I'm like, oh, I got abs year round, but you know, uh, you know what I mean? But it, it's like, it doesn't matter. Like that doesn't matter. It's the ability to get out and do no matter what happens. I, I say this all the time is drop me off on a mountain peak or drop me off in a desert valley. Like I'm cool. Like I don't, I'm, I physically, I have everything I need to get to the next place that I need to go. Most of my peer group does not And that makes me sad because they are so restricted in what they can do in this life. And life is short. So if you're in that, that, you know, 20 to 35 year old range, like you youngsters, like you're still enjoying the benefit of, of youth. Well, that shit changes and you're still going to have two acts to go in life. You're still going to have another 60 years. And I'm going to tell you, that's going to be a slog if your body is not athletic. Anything to add on that, Lens? Yeah, I mean, it just sucks. Like, you see you see it all the time, like, or you hear about it all the time. And, like, I've had so many gym clients that are like, oh, my my kids are going kayaking, but oh, I would never go kayaking. What if I fell out? I, I wouldn't be able to swim or get myself back in the kayak. Like, you're missing out on life, essentially, and experiences whether or not you find that particular event fun or not, but I'm sure there's, I mean, there's millions, hundreds of millions of people that can't do things that they wish they could just because of their health status. And whether that's a, that's a condition that came, came about from their lifestyle or it's their physical being pretty much preventing them from, from doing those things. Like, it's funny. You talked about Disney world, like freaking going to Disney world. Like you're walking like 10 miles a day. Easy. If you're walking around all freaking day, yeah, you always see like the parent or the grandparent or the the dad or whatever sitting on a bench, like just miserable with his big yeah. old belly just sitting there and, and right. swollen ankles. And sucks. you know, I, I feel yeah. terrible for that. I'm just taking mm -hmm. notes here. I feel so bad, and then I get angry yeah. at that and. A lot of times it's people younger than me. There's no excuse for that. There's no excuse. No matter where you are in life, no matter what you're doing, it's, uh, I will say, I'll give you the out if you didn't know. But if you've heard our voices, well, now you know. So everyone here watching this, listening to this, now you know. Now you're on the hook. Sorry. Done. Now you're now it has to get done. You have to get out there. You have to move. You have to go for a walk. You have to stretch. You have to do some squats. You have to do some push-ups. You have to do some B-ups. You have to do some planks. You have to rotate your body with resistance. You have to do these things in order to just be a functioning part of society and to not be a burden on your family. Man, I've, I've been on planes and I see these, these, you know, unfortunately, it seems to be ladies who think. They're too weak to lift up their suitcase. Sure, I can do it, but why do I have to do it? And I always do it because I'm a gentleman, but why do I have to do it? You're a 35, 38, 45, 48 year old human. You can't lift a 20 pound, 16 pound little luggage up over. You can't lift that up over your head. Like, why not? Did you maybe you got hurt? Oh, doing CrossFit. Okay, well, I'll give you an out there. You got a little, little bit of shoulder tweak from your CrossFit workout. Okay, fine. I'll do it for you. We've all been there before. But I see a lot of people like, oh, it's too heavy for me. You fucking mean it's too heavy for you. It's like 12 pounds. Like, what do you do? And guys, too. I see guys that are so physically frail, a, a strong wind blows, and they have to, like, hold on to a, a hand grip. They're going to get blown away. It's, it's embarrassing. And like, God dang, like what, what is happening to the, the mindset of people? Physical strength is a mark of intelligence. And I've, I've had this conversation before. The most physically fit people are very intelligent people. Sometimes they cannot 
elucidate their thoughts in a certain manner. But in order to manifest the type of physical change necessary to achieve goals, to hit benchmarks, there is a level of intelligence that is often misunderstood. Now, I deal with athletes, you deal with athletes that they might not be. They might be fish being told to climb a tree, right? They might be put in situations where they just haven't been trained or exposed to these skills and techniques and, and even concepts. But do not think because someone has, you know, a big, strong person that they are adult. I know a lot of very intelligent people, master's degrees and PhDs. Lindsay, I'm sure you, you come across them in, in your field of work where they are so physically uneducated. It's embarrassing. So their lack of physical education is more appalling than a physically fit person that might not have the same intellectual exposure to string theory, let's say. That's okay. Like, so having the two, and I, I you know, the, the, the ancient Greeks, of course, I think were the greatest at, at embracing this. And this is something that we should aspire to be equally intellectually and physically capable and strong and constantly reading books and straining against, you know, heavy, nearly immovable objects. Yeah. What gets me is like, I'll go to like the ACSM conference almost every year, um, obviously not last year, but you're sitting amongst peers who are all dietitians, strength coaches, sports scientists, physiologists, all of these things. And you still see such a wide variety of fitness levels and body shapes. And then you're listening to the speakers talk about what we're talking about. And I'm like, that dude can't even jump. Like if he tripped on the stairs, you're going down. There's no way you're catching yourself. So it's like, it's interesting, even in a field, because you're talking about intelligence, like even yeah. in a field where this is what we teach and this is what we research and learn about and, and preach, people are still not doing it, not practicing what they, what they preach. So, and I think to kind of bring it all, all full circle, it's like, we're not telling everybody that you have to look like the people in your background. Like you don't have to look like that, no. but don't be so unhealthy that you limit your ability to live your life. Yeah. That's that's it. That's it. I, I agree. And it's interesting. Brian Campbell actually has a and I don't know. And I'm, Brian, I'm going to give you the benefit that you're not trying to troll us per se. See, it feels a little snarky, but but, but I'm not going to handle it like that. It says you want to tell the whole truth? Question mark. Then admit an omnivore with mostly good fatty meat. Yet a fasting period is best. You think ancient man ate four times a day? You point out rightfully on Whole Foods, you are not looking at autophagy, the best benefit of fasting. I'll, let me kind of jump in first. Brian, thank you for being here. I am telling the entire truth. We do talk about a omnivorous meal plan. Omnivoric, I like to say that. Some people say it's wrong. I like to say omnivoric. Meal plan um, with mostly good fatty meat. Yet a fasting period. So when you say mostly good fatty meat, what does that mean? Is that four ounces? Is that eight ounces? Is that 40 ounces a day? Um, you know, 215 pounds or so, just under 11% body fat. I'll say 11%, but I'm under 11% right now. Um, and, and that being said, I only eat about four to six ounces of red meat per day. I eat another, you know, six to eight ounces of fish. I eat another, you know, two whole eggs plus whites. I eat a little bit of chicken, four to six ounces of chicken. I eat beans. I eat quinoa, I eat potatoes. I eat rice. I eat amaranth. I eat hemp seeds. I eat chia seeds. I eat blueberries. I eat strawberries. I eat raspberries. Like, man, I'm going to go down the fucking list of stuff that I eat. So am I fitting into your criteria? I don't know that I am. And am I fasting? No, I'm not fasting. Well, I do fast while I sleep, which is typically nine hours because I go to bed nine hours before I wake up and I wake up. I usually hydrate first thing. I have a little bit of black coffee and then I perform low intensity, steady state exercise for an hour or so. So my fasting window is about, you know, 13 or so hours of fasting time, we could say, because I typically eat, you know, two to three hours before I go to bed. So that being said, am I fasting? No, I'm living a normal life. Now, further, we know for a fact to as much as we can that prehistoric man and woman, they didn't fast. They ate when food was available. 
So they didn't eat four times a day. Sometimes they ate 12 times a day. Sometimes they ate once every other day. They ate when food was available. They did not restrict their eating based upon time. They ate when food was available. We have the benefit of an abundance of food that is readily available. So we say eat based upon activity. Now, I eat probably 400 to 600 calorie meals on average spread throughout that 11 or so hour of eating period that I have. I eat typically four to six meals per day, evenly, routinely. My blood pressure or my blood work is perfect. My body composition is perfect. I'm bigger and stronger and faster and leaner than the majority of my peers and probably people 20 years younger than me. So your statement here of autophagy, 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 man, it's so funny to see people blindly grab on these bullet points. When I look at my blood work more so than I get my blood work done more in the year than most people do in 10 years, my fucking blood work is perfect. So am I wrong or are you just grabbing at sound bites that you heard on your favorite podcast? I don't know. But also, we work with thousands of humans every year. We have access to their blood work consistently. I mean, we probably have a much larger data set than you do. And almost everyone else out there, I think we have a pretty damn robust data set that we get to look at. So, Lindsay, do you have any anything to add? I know I'm kind of. Yeah, old. I just don't understand why we are taking the ancient lifestyle and ancient man and making that as if that's ideal. I know. Like, right? why would you want to not be able to find food for two days? So why would we adopt that and say, well, oh, this is the best way to live because that's all our ancestors ate. Well, that wasn't ideal. You don't think they were sitting there starving, wishing that a friggin' elk would run past so they could shoot it and eat it. Like, why is that now the, the basis of all these diets? Like that, that wasn't Mark the ideal way to man. live. It's called survival of the fittest. People evolve. We've evolved. We have grocery stores now that we could go to and shop and we have a fridge full of food so we could eat four times a day because that's what's ideal for our bodies. I don't know. <laughs> Poof. You make such a great point, Lindsay, and again, that goes to the conflation of science where I think Lauren Cardain with the paleo diet and then Rob kind of fanned the flames to that with the paleo solution. And then we start looking at what the CrossFit primal movement, you know, kind of community did. It sounds fucking cool. And unfortunately, we have a very soft population here in the world as it is today. The, the human population, by and large, first world population has gotten soft. We have our fancy little cars with our fancy little air conditioning. Man, we get pissed off when we don't get Wi-Fi in a fucking intercontinental flight 30,000 feet above the fucking ground, right? Like, what do you mean you don't have quinoa like on an airplane? Like, you know, we're such a soft civilization now that people yearn to be this primal. I'm, I'm going to go and sh I'm going to shoot a bow and arrow now. I'm going to shoot a bow and arrow. I'm going to be a fucking man. I'm going to be hard. I'm going to be hard. It's this bullshit fucking mentality, which is really what it comes down to. And you make such a great point. What are you trying to do and, and pretend that you're primal for? You go to the grocery, you get Domino's pizza delivered to your house twice a week. You, you got beer in your refrigerator right now. You're eating fucking sub sandwiches. You got, you know, Sour Patch Kids that, that your girlfriend, you know, giving you some while you're sitting there watching Netflix and chilling on your streaming service. But you pretend like you're all of a sudden some sort of hardcore person because you go and you bounce barbells off the floor with your shirt off and you got some fucking tattoos. So now all of a sudden you're hardcore and then you shout out autophagy because you've heard Dr. Rhonda Patrick or Jason Fung say it a few times and it sounded fucking cool. It's not how it works, right? It, it, it's not how it works. And, you know, I, I like to have fun. Um, and, and Brian, I'm not talking about you, right? It's just kind of like the bigger picture. We're talking about more of the community. So Brian, thank you for the question, Brian. I appreciate that, man. And like I said, I didn't think you, you, you were, weren't taking a piss, um, at us. You were just kind of, you know, putting that information out there. Big picture though, helpful whole food, organic food, um, earth grown food, unmolested by man, devoid of synthetic toxic chemicals, right? Omnivorous meal plan. Like that's, that's what works. Eat until satisfied, not until full. Like that, that's, that's what works. We eat enough, but not too much. 
We get all of our vitamins and minerals and, and, and cofactors and phytonutrients. We, we kind of need all that stuff because we're cellular organisms, we humans. We are not what we look at. We are much, much, you know, smaller particles, all just kind of stacked, you know, mushed together. That's what we are here. This is all a big facade. And if you don't understand that, you don't understand anything about nutrition. That, that, that's, that's data set one. Look at it from the cellular level and then build out. Most people don't. You get idiots like Greg Doucette to talk about calories in, calories out while he's fucking shoving needles into his ass all fucking day long. Built his entire career about being a drug addict, right? But he's trying to tell people how to eat synthetic toxic chemicals. You got these doctors running around telling people how to be primal, how to be primal when they're selling all these, these manufactured supplements, right? These little, you know, electrolyte replacement drinks to provide the nutrients people are deprived of because they're following their fucking meal plans. Well, that, that, that's great marketing. Hey, follow this meal plan, which mandates you then must buy these supplements to get all the nutrition you need to actually be healthy, but follow my meal plan. So you'll then need this supplement. Doesn't that, I mean, what a great business model, by the way, but I like to sleep at night. I like to sleep with a clear conscience at night. That's why we come on here. We rant, we yell. We get the, you know, the, the, the great Professor Lindsey Howard on to, to share this information for you guys for free. We have robust conversations with people from around the world, unfiltered, um, um, right? So as these information, as these come in, we just answer the questions as they are. Um, um, a small point that I was just thinking of. If these all these doctors are pushing like the primal lifestyle and we should live like our ancestors and eat like our ancestors, what about pharmaceutical drugs? Yeah. They didn't exist. Ooh. So are you also going to tell people to never take a prescription drug ever? So we want to live primally. Let's talk about lifespan. Lifespan span then versus lifespan now. Yeah. So it's just it's it's all marketing, I think. So, I mean, I'm sure there are some people that are truly trying to help people and they're just misinformed. But I think a lot of the people are like, oh, I have genetically a genetically great looking body. Let me sell a diet program um, yeah. just because I think I can make money on it. So it's just it. it's just fun, fun to talk about. That is the I mean, that is Instagram right there. You get these beautiful people, right? Just genetically gifted guys and gals out there that look incredible. And then they sell their little IG coaching programs and people buy them. And Lord knows they got way more followers than, than I do. Right. The fucking look awesome. I, I, I love to say if I looked good in a G string, I would have one of the biggest uh, Instagram accounts ever on I try. I, I just can't find the right color, by the way. And uh, I, I don't know. So it just, just you doesn't work. Go with animal prints and then, and then start pushing like carnivore diet. Carnivore. That's yeah. <laughs> Rust like the animals, eat the animals. Could you imagine how disgusting that would be? It Please would don't. be. Uh, <laughs> oh, I promise, Lindsay, I, I will not. I, I will not for you. I will. I mean, it would, I would be banned for sure. I, like, for this content has been flagged. <laughs> every community, the, the, the trans community, the, the bi community, the hetero community, the cis community, like, Every possible, I, that would be the one thing that like finally, like they're all, they all come together. The Democrats, the Republicans, they would all come together to ban me because I wore a leopard print G-string to, to boost my IG rating. They'd be like, en enough is enough with this. We cannot, we just cannot see that. We, I can't unsee that anymore. Horrible, horrible. Um, what else do we have? Uh, Brian says, let me see. Uh, hard to be straight carnivore. So your diet is the most practical, but say, just saying include a fasting period to clean out old cells. Autophagy can happen in fasting. It's real science. Well, Brian, what about sitting in the hot sauna? That induces autophagy. What about sleep, Brian? What about sleep? What about a, a, a lack of a stressful lifestyle? What about a zero stress lifestyle? What about that? What about living a lean, healthy lifestyle? What about not ingesting synthetic toxic chemicals? Uh, you can't speak back. So I'm not mad at you, Brian, once again, but it's like, oh, what about this? What about this? Autophagy is a one bullet point 
pulled from a study, pick whatever study it might be, that is massively conflated and it's turned into a straw man argument. So most of the fitness markers can sell stuff. You know what? You know what's going to help you? I guarantee you dollars to donuts. Here's what you do. You get good sleep every night. You find a loving, lasting relationship where you unconditionally care and support for each other. You open doors for strangers. You smile and wave at your neighbors. You, you, you pay all your bills on time and you invest your money so you have it waiting for you for the future so then you have no stress. You keep an orderly home life. You wake up on time. You wake up early with the sun and you go to bed with the sun. You eat healthful whole food devoid of synthetic toxic chemicals in wide variety based upon activity that will change in time. It will change with life. It will change with activity. It will change with goal sets. How about you do that? I guarantee you, you will live longer than if you simply live a normal lifestyle and simply just fast. Period. Like, or, you know, the, the, the whole list can go on and on and on and on and on. Man, what about, you know, the, these iPhones, right? What about the radiation from the iPhones? Well, fuck, man, I should probably get rid of that. What about all the, the 5G networks that are pumping out in the world? You should probably get rid of Wi-Fi. Don't talk about autophagy if you got Wi-Fi in your house at all. How dare you? You don't even believe in science, brah. Now, we could go down. I'm just doing this to have some fun. We could really start going down, going down, going down that, that rabbit hole. You're making it too hard and you're making it too exclusive. You're making it too restrictive. You're raising the point of entry so high that it's not possible for most people or most people because they only eat six hours a day. They somehow think that they're going to live long and be healthy. I don't, I haven't seen one single study that shows that. And for how long, by the way, we said that earlier, I mean, is it from birth? How, does that work for a baby? Like, let, if, if that's the case for humans, all right, so let's do it to a baby. Hey, baby, you know what? You're going to have to fucking fast, little fucker. Don't, don't be giving me that crying whine when, when you want to, you know, uh, feed on, on, on mama's, you know, teeth. That's the proper term. I don't know if that's the scientific term for it, but like, hey, baby, no, baby, I want you to live long. All right, little baby. So you're, you're only going to eat once a day. Where does that stop? It's like, well, no, that's not what I'm saying. So then when? So pre-puberty then? Maybe we should just fast until when? Till, till 10 or 12? When does this kick in? Answer me that question before you talk about autophagy. Answer that question for me. And then we can have a deeper discussion. But until then, it's just a bullet point that was used to conflate information to sell you a product, a program, a pill, powder, potion. That's all it is. That's all it is. So I wish the, it wasn't. Go ahead, Lynn. The newest, that, that's the newest term for like cleansing. Cleansing was like a huge thing. Let's cleanse our body. Let's cleanse our cells. That's essentially cleaning out old cells. That's what it essentially means. But it's the same thing. It's being twisted and contorted into like this marketable thing. And now it's only associated with fasting. Like Google, when does when does autop autophagy happen? During sleep. That's going to be the first result. <laughs> Bam. So then sleep more, right? Is, is that nine hours of sleep that we've been talking about since forever? Like go to bed nine hours before you're supposed to wake up. Oh man, but my favorite show comes on. So you're going to fucking fast. You're not going to go to bed at a reasonable hour. You're not going to wake up with the sun. Hey, who wakes up with the sun? Who wakes up without an alarm clock at almost the exact same time every single day? Well, this dude does. Man, I haven't set an alarm clock. I don't even know. Like if I'm traveling internationally, I have a flight to catch. Maybe I'll set an alarm clock. Maybe. Like th this is a whole nother issue. We can get into chronobiology. We can really start going deep down. Brian, man, I really love the, the question and how respectful you've been in bringing it up. It gives us a good opportunity to have this conversation. Now, one thing I will say when it comes to fasting, if you're following our three weeks to shredded program, and even our Living Lean program, personal personalized programs that we have, yeah, if anyone's interested, what is that? You can look at the, the, the description below. We have a link that you can click, learn more about that. But inside that, you will see that we have what we call modified fasts that are sprinkled in throughout the program. That's not so much to induce autophagy. 
It's simply to improve digestive efficiency. It's to allow more of a neutral state for your digestive system to rebalance itself. So we're not pushing food in constantly. We call it a modified fast. Essentially, it's once every seven to 10 days or so where effectively you skip breakfast and then you just kind of ease back in with a, a lighter meal as it continues back in, into the full spectrum. That's a little bit different for everyone based upon your personal intake as that goes. So we have modified fast built in, but it's, it's relative to the individual. Man, what if I wake up? What if you're Ronda Rousey? When I was training with Ronda, Ronda was awake at 5 a.m. to get in the pool and go swimming. She would train again at 11. She would train it again in between four and five. So what are you saying? Ronda can only eat six hours on that day? She can only, And she was actually following Chad Waterbury's one meal a day program. I think, you know, Chad's got some good strength coach information. I'm not bashing Chad, but she was working with Chad. Ronda was destroyed. She was falling apart. That's why she hired me. She was eating one meal a day following a version of, of Ori Hoffmankler's warrior diet that was kind of put forth by Chad. It was destroying her. And she's spoken about this openly. So I'm not divulging, uh, um, you know, Coach Klein information. Ron just put this out there. I haven't, I won't speak to the whole issue that is not public. That's a great example. So Ron just only eat one time a day or two times or in a six hour window. Well, she actually tried that and it was fucking destroying her. Deep, dark bags under her eyes. Her hair was just so frail and brittle, like like she was just like blow drying it all day long. Her skin was, was, you know, kind of blotchy and beat up. She had this injury on her hand, on her knuckle from the, uh, you know, punching from her hand wraps for six weeks. It didn't heal. It got worse. What did we do? We actually tripled her calories, put her on a six meal a day diet. Within two weeks, that wound was completely gone. She was just beautiful and bright and like booming. Her training just went sky high. She spoke about this, which is why, I mean, Rhonda's a very intelligent person, Olympic level, Olympic bronze medalist before she brought us on. She was already a world champion before she brought us on. She brought us on because of the benefit of the science and of the, 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 the personal application of the science that we brought to her. So I'm using a real world example. I know it's a little anecdotal here using this one example, but it, it's a good avatar for you to think about. She was fasting and she was being destroyed as a result of it. So I don't, I don't know anything else. And I see there's more, more questions here. Well, we are going long and late on time. Guys and girls, you are awesome. Lindsay, you are awesome. Anything to tell the, the, the good group out here, Lindsay, before we jump out? Just do your research. Don't, don't follow everything that you see on Instagram. Some of it is good. Some of it is okay. And some of it sucks. So just do your research. Back it up and don't, you know, read into things like, the topic that we were just on, like you would find that most of the research was done in rats. Like yeah. read about that. So you see a headline, but read into it. Find out the reason why that little blurb or the thing on Good Morning America, um, you know, came up and make, make changes that are actually gonna help you. Don't worry about cleansing out your dead cells if you're still running around following a horrible lifestyle. <laughs> Fix that first and then you could worry about your cells. Yeah, like, if, if just be kind of common sense here. Come if you're on. still going to the club, if you're, you're still, well, maybe not, if you're still, you know, waking up and having some beers with your guy or your girl a couple nights a week, don't talk to me about autophagy, right? If you're still, you know, having a little bit of candy here and there, if you're still living a stressful lifestyle, not paying your bills on time, don't talk to me about autophagy. Like get all your other stuff in gear in order. And then, hey, maybe we can find a few margin of improvement if everything is then perfect. But don't talk to me about primal man or primal woman or all this other BS out there. Just start living an ordered, intelligent lifestyle. And Lindsay, you, you, I mean, that was a comment of the of the year right there is, is don't blindly follow what you see on Instagram, right? I mean, how many people do that? And actually read the God darn study that your your Instagram influencers or your podcast hosts reference, right? This is one of the biggest thing. And I'm not going to shout out names just yet. I might in the future. 
but I know so many widely regarded, regarded well-respected people that have taken studies that they didn't even read. They just read the headline and they just conflate it based upon their own bias and they put it out in their population as if it's true. So then everyone who reads it or everyone who hears their influencer talk about it, well, it must be true because he or she just said it was true. And then later on, they'll be like, oh, I, I've, I reached out. I was like, yo, what are you saying? Like, did you, did you even look at this? And they're like, oh my God, I didn't even see that. And they're like, oh, my intern, my assistant, my, my lead re researcher. Oh yeah. And then they'll, they'll go and they'll just wipe it away. I got at least three instances that you guys, I, I don't want to put it out there because they actually did make a change. Fucking crazy. One, it, one, it was about, it, it was, it was a study. I, I got to put this out there. One was a study that this person put forth the ketogenic diet narrative. The study was performed on four postpartum middle-aged women, four ladies, just after having children, I think within like three months of having children, they followed a low-carb diet. They were still eating like 200 grams of carbs per day. Low carb is compared to the traditional American diet. Well, this individual put forth the narrative how the ketogenic diet has shown to reduce body mass in oh, overweight women. They just had a baby. They just had baby. They were naturally 10, 15% high in, in body weight as a result of. They didn't follow a ketogenic diet. It was a lower carb diet. That was still more carbs than almost I eat every day, averaged out. And it, it, it did not take the, the actual food, the, the quality of nutrition consumed. It didn't even care about the quality of nutrition. So it was absolutely insane. Considered, and they were like, oh, oh yeah, oh. Ooh, and they like blame somebody on their team. Well, that's like the people that are like, oh, this was an actual research study and this is from the science but you're like twisting and, and contorting all the, all the things you're taking one sentence from the discussion where they're like, this would be interesting to look at in future research. And they're like, that's what happened. Yeah. So it's like, it, yeah, it's, it's never going to be, never going to be perfect. You know, who does a good job is, is uh, Andy Galpin. Um, oh yeah. Cause he's always like, this is something that we should do more research on. This was an interesting finding or this was an interesting, um, you know, statement or this this kind of brought an interesting observation. More research needs to be done on this yeah. one. It's still very but it needs more. But it needs more. Andy's I think he does that almost too much sometimes. <laughs> but to, but to be fair, he's absolutely right. And he really does go above and beyond to say needs more, needs more. Doesn't prove it's interesting, though. It's interesting to note needs more information. Right. And that's, I mean, any, re any research, one singular research study doesn't prove something like hands down. You talk about like real re reliability and validity, that re same research has to be repeated over and over and over again with thousands of people in order for it to be truly legit, we'll say. Yeah. Like if you, you're doing a small research study with 10 people and it just so happens that those 10 people, I don't know, lost weight on a keto diet. Fine. But yeah, you get what I'm saying. Fine. Yeah. And it's as compared to what? It's like, well, they were eating pizzas every single day for the 30 days beforehand because they knew right. the, the diet was coming up. And then they lost 10 pounds in the first week. Keto diet drops 10 pounds in one week. That's what the headline will be. Crazy. Well, Lindsay, you are awesome. Thank you so much. You guys and gals, you are awesome. Thank you for hanging out, having fun. Definitely leave comments below this video. If you have any further questions, click the, the links below in the description area. So if you want to work with Lindsay, you want to speak one-on-one -on -one with Lindsay. She offers 30 minute consultations where she can go down and deep into your life, into your background, into your health history, and really troubleshoot what you need to get moving forward. You can even work one-on-one -on -one with her to build you a robust eight-week personalized diet plan. We also have online personalized meal plans at vdolcediet.com. Click the link below that were designed by our team of registered dietitians, exercise physiologists, and certified trainers in a very easy to follow personalized vehicle. This is the number one rated online healthy weight loss platform. Unfortunately, we are not cutting calories. We are not cutting carbohydrates. We are not forcing you to fast all day. We're not telling you to take uh, pills, powders, potions. We're just simply teaching you how to eat appropriately 
for your life to have what we believe the, the fastest and most efficient possible outcome. Click the link below just to learn more about it. Educate yourself. Um, guys and gals, you are awesome. Thank you. Once again, we will be back soon. Boom.